good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to today's SAP Insider 2020 virtual event session. My name is John Froelich from Bramasol, and I will be your presenter today. We have just a few announcements before we begin. You can participate in the Q&A session by asking questions about the information presented in this webinar at any time. Just type your question into the Q&A box located below the speaker bio on the left. Then click the submit button. We will respond back to your questions individually after the session. The slides will advance automatically throughout this event. At this time, we recommend you disable your pop-up blockers. You can also download a PDF copy of the presentation by clicking on the resources in the bottom right of the console. If you're experiencing any technical problems, please visit our webinar help guide by clicking on the help question mark icon on the bottom right of the console. If the slides are not advancing, please press the F5 key on your keyboard to refresh your console. Now on to your, our presentation on treasury and risk management in times of economic disruption. So everybody, we're here talking about treasury and risk management in times of economic disruption. I am here with Kim Dowling, the head of our treasury practice, myself, John Froelich, VP of marketing and strategy, and Julio Dalla Costa, who is the head of our accounting advisory services. Welcome, Kim and Julio. Thank you, John. So um, welcome everyone today. So I'd like to get started. So with Treasury and Risk Management, what I wanted to um, get started with um, was the agenda that we're going to be talking about today, where we're going to be talking about the future of Treasury and financial leadership. We're going to talk about our focused approach, and then we'll move on to go through the Treasury and Risk Management solutions, where I want to concentrate on a focused approach covering our payment and bank communications and our cash and liquidity management. And then I wanna end with um, the risk mitigation um, areas that we look for in today's focused environment amid the COVID virus and other complexities that we're running in today, uh, which cover through the processes of cash management, operations and treasury and risk analytics. So within the world of the business that we are in today, it is becoming much more complex and volatile today, as we know what we're experiencing with the social distancing and the, the COVID virus today, where the role of the treasury is becoming much more critical than ever. And the role is been, has been evolving from a tactical role to acting as strategic partner and advisor to the business to help us make quick decisions by delivering those online data-driven insights and monitoring all their executions. So even more than ever, this is becoming much more critical to Treasury today. And at this moment, our current polls have indicated that 90% of our executives are still expecting their teams to be able to drive those higher business value and influence their business sessions decisions by able to very quickly react to the business events that we're having from now and over the next few years. So what I wanted to do is if I look at it from a treasury focused approach, looking at today's critical challenges, you know, it is important that we work towards a focused approach to resolve today's challenges and enabling the organizations to become more strategic in order to manage the current concerns that we have today, such as items such as, you know, do we have all the risk factors under control? You know, how do we best handle these emerging liquidity constraints? You know, how do I increase transparency into the currency, the current cash flows? You know, I'm facing default risk on my debt as a result of insufficient cash flows. How do I pay interest? You know, what do I do? You know, how do I increase my payables, um, excuse me, increase my receivables and maybe delay my payables and take more advantages of um, the, the different terms and conditions that I could have? Um, what if we have increased credit risk for our corporate customers? Items such as that. And Julio, I wanted to ask, you know, from your accounting perspective, what are some of the thoughts um, that you would like to share that's what you're seeing in this environment? Well, Kim, as you correctly said, even though we are undergoing a very challenging time at the moment, companies have to go on as normal. And what I mean by that is in the back office, 
the transaction still have to be recorded and the accounting has to be done. Companies still are releasing their earnings for Q1 and they're still getting through their second quarter as we speak. So, you know, even though the world has changed, the back office accountants, they are still doing their work as needed. So I think it's a critical time to understand key drivers, what, what is it going to take to continue my transactions and my accounting processes in the back end, Kim. Mm -hmm. I think also folks will probably find also with today's with today's situation um, how important those business continuity plans actually have been um, now that we're actually experiencing them having to, to work remotely. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Kim, because as we know from a recent PwC Pulse study of CFOs, Many of them are concerned about business continuity, risk, uh, and other issues. And in fact, 70% of them are worried about uh, the economic impacts of this COVID virus situation and are looking at ways to manage and control cash, uh, mitigate risks, and ensure complete visibility. So I think absolutely this, this resonates uh, with that. So exactly. how, can, how can we do that? Well, a couple things <clears throat> that um, when we were thinking through this process, what I wanted to focus on today and, and try to help um, come up with recommendations that I see that we, how we can manage these challenges is um, looking at, if you're looking at our current market reality in our treasury organizations, there's a focused approach, I feel, on critical areas that actually help in, us enable and streamline our processes and technology where that with real time access to this detailed information anywhere, anytime, because as we really know, we really do need it anywhere and anytime, especially since we're working remotely, that you know you can proactively make better decisions for your business, you know, both internally and for external stakeholders. You know, they'll have the confidence and the visibility with that streamlined and standardized treasury processes. We're gonna get into that in a little bit more in a little bit, but in some of the these areas that are really critical to look at are one our strategic support. You know, the growing expectations from our leadership and from our treasury organizations that we need to engage and make strategic decisions. Rather, we're, you know, maybe not doing any mergers and acquisitions at the moment, but also on our, what's our growth plans? What's our changing models? Treasury needs that continuous connectivity and alignment with our internal and external stakeholders. Even though we may not be together, we still need to connect with one another. For our focuses on the risk and you know we're, we're have those post financial crisis crisis changes you know the business environment we're impacting in for corporations we need to have that liquidity management we need to have that counterparty in our credit risk we're having increased volatility we need to have that deeper focus on those different risk factors you know what's going on with the foreign exchange risk what's going on or commodity prices such as oil what about the interest rates what's the risk there what's going on there um, you know, of course, you also have to be careful because now we're having that increase. We've been seeing some cases of increased cyber risk, in which you know can also um, bring up our costs too if we're not on top of that. Thirdly, regulatory changes. Um, Julio, this is a big part of your area. There's a lot of changes in this space today. And I'd like, uh, you know, for, for example, on our LIBOR rates and some of our FASI changes. I wonder if you want to talk about that a little bit more. Yes, definitely, Kim. So. As we know, before this pandemic, there was a movement away from LIBOR onto different other measures to have debt, interest rates, and companies, especially the derivative accountants and the back office has been working on doing that. So you have to basically move from LIBOR, which has been used for the last 60 years, to another measure. However, with the pandemic, Another thing has come up from a regulatory perspective, which is cash flow hedging. So as we know, in a cash flow hedge, you are allowed to, if, if, it, if it's effective and designated, that effect of that cash flow hedge can go to other comprehensive income. Many companies, especially multinationals, have designated cash flow hedges in the areas of foreign currency purchases and sales, commodity purchases and sales, and interest payments and receipts. The FASB actually met a couple of weeks ago to tell um, preparers that basically the pandemic is now considered an extenuating and rare circumstance. 
So what, what does that mean for the everyday preparer? It means that normally, if forecasted transactions are not probable of occurring within the originally specified time period, that hedge relationship has to be de-designated. And therefore, it moves from other comprehensive income into your P&L statement, your income statement. Well, with the FASB's fast action, what they have said is that the FASB believes that the impacts from the pandemic are considered extenuating circumstances and OCI can be held until the originally forecasted transaction impact earnings, as long as the delay in the transaction can be attributed to the pandemic. So in summary, what does that mean? That means that as Kim mentioned, the oil price has collapsed. Interest rates are all over the place right now. And basically, in many situations for cash flow hedging, you no longer have an effective hedge. Currencies are moving all the time. And therefore, under normal gap purposes, you would have to now de-designate that cash flow hedge and put that effect into your income statement, which could make your income statement swing significantly either way. The FASB says, as long as you have this forecasted transaction and can be attributed to the pandemic, the effect can be remain in OCI until this pandemic subsides or 90 days. It's a very, very big change and the FASB has come out and we actually applaud them for coming out sooner rather than later because a lot of CFOs and treasurers have been worried about the volatility in the markets right now, Kim? Yeah, exactly, especially when you're dealing with the volatility and you're also dealing with regulatory change at the same time. If you, when you don't have that nimbleness of having the processes and the systems to support your activities, it makes it much more difficult to be able to react as quickly as you need to, to um, comply with the regulatory components, especially changes in it, let alone be able to, you know, monitor what's going on. Um, so having all your information straight through in one place and having those true connections really make it critical, not, and not just on a normal basis, but especially in, in times like this. <clears throat> the last two items that I want to cover here that are very critical in our focused approach are centralization which is where we're really expecting that we have that opportunity for those streamlined and centralized processes. We're also, expect, stake, stakeholders are also expecting us to complete the accurate and timely visibility into our global cash or it could be our hedging strategies and so forth, but we need that single visibility of the truth to be able to do that. We're in the last item with the technology and transformations. Treasury departments are requiring this information from many sources. You know, for such as, you know, we need the information from Reuters or from Bloomberg's. We need to be able to get our exposures in there so we can do our hedging. We also have cases where we're, we're leveraging mobile technology to access our real-time information anywhere, anytime. I mean, think about it where, you know, you'd be able to pull up your cell phone and, and be able to have the visibility of some of the transactions that maybe the treasurer has to approve. He's on his, you know, they had to do a critical transaction last minute and he's right in the middle of a major conference, he can pull it up and step away and do his approvals. Or to keep up with the latest technology innovations that we need to do to keep ahead of the competition. So we can always be ready at any time to drive any kind of process efficiency that we need in order to um, reduce our costs. So with that, um, I have, these are the three particular areas that I wanted, that I think are very important to be focusing on um, for the business and treasury and risk to today. And one being the cash liquidity management, where it does help us enable a company's cash department to manage our corporate or business bank accounts centrally, or have the overview of our cash movements easily. So our cash managers can get a high level overview and a detailed insight into those bank accounts, our cash positions, our liquidity forecast, our actual cash flows, and so forth. So we can actually enable them to help them make those decisions and take those actions directly. So with that real time visibility, they can be, be very proactive with that single version of single source of the truth. Where payments and bank communications, on the other hand, is where we're looking at, you know, optimizing of all those those accounts, being able to have all of our payments, inflows and outflows in one centralized place, 
And one also way to do that very efficiently is using the SAP multi-bank connectivity, which actually helps us remove the risk of lemonade errors. It's actually a very secure environment for our processing of our payments in and out um, from SAP into our banks. And it also does it in a very standardized um, process with also enables the approval workflows, which are critical to make sure payments are not made without the appropriate approvals, rather it be on values or who's or you know dual or dual approval process or whatever it is for that company. It also helps us reduce those transaction costs and fees that you'll come up to with the maintenance of those bank connections. But also more importantly, it also is both these two together with the cash and liquidity management and the payments and bank communications gives you that visibility of the working capital management. So working capital, the primary purpose of working capital is to enable the company to be able to maintain significant sufficient cash flows to meet their short-term operating costs and they're also their short-term debt obligations. The third item here, the third box to the right, is where we will get into the financial risk and compliance um, management. And as, um, you know, with the collapse of oil today that we had, we can take a big advantage of that with our hedging strategies and that Julio was going into more detail um, today on the, the prior slide with the um, the, the latest change in, in FASB on April 8th of this month. Um, Julio, do you want to go a little bit more deeper into that sure. on the financial risk and compliance? Yes, definitely. So, you know, on the first bullet there, we talk about having, like Kim was talking about workflow. So, you know, the accountants in the back office, they are basically recording the transactions and reporting the transactions. So workflow is a critical aspect, especially in high risk areas as derivative accounting. So you want to make sure that there's a system in place manually or, or in the system that will allow you to, the preparer is different from the reviewer. The good thing about this system with, with SAP is that there's automated workflow. The second piece is when you do a derivative transaction and you start hedging against other interest rates, currencies, commodities, or what have you, you have to be able to get that information real time. And once you have that information real time and you designate a, a hedge, the next part of it from an accounting perspective is you have to have the proper documentation. Documentation ensures that the hedge is effective and provides your auditors and your supervisors and reviewers that the hedge has been properly designated. Otherwise, as we saw said in the previous slide, it goes to your income statement, which nobody wants. The good thing about the system is it automates that hedging strategy where you can have a place to document it. You can have, you can pull all your documentation into that transaction. So therefore, as opposed to keeping it on your work file or in on your computer, it's all in the system and can be easily reviewed for proper compliance procedures, either by your external auditors, internal auditors, or just your supervisor. Kim? <clears throat> Thank you, Julio. Yeah, Julio, yeah. just one quick comment um, on the finance risk. I think, Julio, you hit the nail on the head in compliance. Sometimes in emergencies or situations like this, we find that um, you know, just because we're remote or just because things are urgent does not obviate having compliances and controls in, in place. And I think you hit the nail on the head on that, that we need to make sure we manage that carefully, especially in today's um, environment. Exactly. So with our next slide, um, this is a slide I'm, sh I'm sure many of you have seen before in our webinars, but it's an important slide because as you see here, this is the center the SAP Digital Core Center of our Treasury components, which is also governed by our governance, risk, and compliance. But with our focused approach on cash liquidity management, our payments and bank connectivity, and our working capital management and risk management, we also have the Treasury and risk management solutions that are within the SAP Digital Core with that deck direct integration with all those other components, such maybe our trading platforms, that could be Reuters for FX, or it could be our FX rates, 
uh, for our hedging strategies or Bloomberg for our FX rates or interest rates. We have the um, various different market data that we also bring in. We have the multi-bank connectivity for processing our payments to and from the bank, as well as um, you know, there are regulatory reporting and so forth. But what's very important is that we're able to pull this information into one central place. Because in today's environment, it, we really need to be very careful that we're understanding what's going on with our customers' behaviors, what's going on with credit risk, you know, who we who are our best paying customers, who are we going to make sure that we have those receivables coming in? Um, what about our cash flows and our liquidity forecast? How is that being impacted? What's happening in the marketplace today? You know, such as what Julia mentioned as well with the um, the changes in in um, FAS for that happened on April 8th with our hedging. We need to make sure that we're getting all of that data from all those external sources real time. So we can really be able to run seamlessly and process our deals end to end without any hiccups along the way. It's total seamless with all of our processing from all the way straight down to our accounting and our approval workflows. So with those um, three core, those core areas that I want to talk about, the first one we'll go into is the payments and bank communication benefits, is that with the payments and bank communications, we're really able to have that real-time, up-to-date global access to that transactional information and account balances by those consolidating payments and cash management positions into one single view. So we're able to interface that information with the AP and AR subsystems to actually integrate all of our outgoing and inbound funds on a daily basis. And if you can see from the pictorial here, where we have all of our treasury processes, whether it be on premises or in the cloud, APAR, payroll, treasury, in-house cash, and so forth, that seamlessly can connect through the multi-bank connectivity uh, with our banks. What I like about this, Kim, and, and you and I have talked about this again mm -hmm. with Julio, is you know, in today's environment particularly, and as a people are looking for ways that they can improve, there are small items that you can address. You can look at, you know, how am I getting my bank statements? You know, what do my bank statements look like? Have I securely used something like an MBC to route and get my information back and forth from the banks? Do I really have a view of my cash flows? Because at this point, we all know cash is king. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think this is some some place that you know companies can look at. Um, you know, what can I do today, and how can I execute something quickly? Yeah, it makes it very difficult if you don't have those streamlined processes um, straight through it. Um, having to log into all those portals, especially in today's environment, um, it makes you know for one, you can also open yourself up to um, to risk to cyber risk as well. So it makes it very much more secure when you're in a secure environment, um, straight through from SAP, straight through the secure environment, multi-bank connectivity as an example, straight through to your banks. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so with the cash and liquidity management, which was the um, the the other box, the second box that we had looked at, what I find is that one of the top priorities of treasury organizations is really, as we keep on talking about, to efficiently manage our cash and liquidity across the enterprise. But as these organizations are growing in size and complexity, or in difficult times like today, it becomes really increasingly difficult to gain that accurate view of the company's cash position. So with a single version of that truth, with that consolidated view of your cash flows from all sources in one place, it allows you both those overviews and quick quick drill towns all the way down to the beginning of that transaction so that you can actually see what's going on and it actually empowers the cash uh, managers um, using this cash management solution, which also will give them that global access to their bank balances in real time across the whole enterprise. So they gain those internal visibility to the organization's cash flows. You're managing those bank accounts across one company centrally implementing those robust controls as we talked about earlier and opening and closing all your bank accounts and the signatory management which you'll do in a bank account management it's not master data anymore excuse me it's master data now it's not done through configuration so treasury has full control over their their banking information you can also set up those cash pool structures you can perform your intercompany netting or run your payments on behalf of or your receipts on behalf of you know the pobo ro robo or encapsulate that you know within your in-house cash structures for your virtual bank accounts and eliminating the number of bank accounts that you have. 
or you're looking at optimizing your costs associated with your bank services using your bank fee analysis applications. It's all trying to look at how can we preserve cash, how can we reduce the churn and those fees. You know, the overdrafts, it, that's going to impact your credit lines. And you're going to reduce your banking fees and borrowing costs if, you ha if you're making sure you know where, that you're not having those overdrafts and you can manage your cash appropriately. Or if you want to look, look at getting detail, detailed liquidity forecasts. So you can plan for your future as your cash flows, you know what your cash flows are, and your payables and receivables, any kind of your investments, whatever you may have, you have it all in one place, and then you can plan for the current state and for your long term so that you can actually manage your treasury operations appropriately. Now, so the, the last um, section that we were going to talk about today is talking about risk mitigation and how we can actually how that actually can help us improve our business decisions efficiently now i have had this um, set up in three different um, areas that we want to focus on today and one being as we keep on talking about very critical is managing that cash making sure we have those real-time data views and making sure we can actually have that instant visibility into our working capital we know what's going on with our short-term and long-term um, you know, our payables, receivables, and our, our debt, being able to actually have um, enterprise-wide management across the across the board. While streamlined processes, we're looking at making sure those processes are fully streamlined end-to-end. -end. We're actually, by doing that, we're enhancing our ability to have our operational quality across our entire organization from the initiation all the way down through accounting and from reporting lowering our bank fees in the process by having those streamlined processes where we're not having to um, pay extra fees logging into our logging into our, our bank portals all the time to you know constantly get a hold of our inf our banking information we can have all our bank accounts streamlined and reduce the number of bank accounts that we have today that single source of truth is critical and of course we have that transparency that we have so we can get our arms around that the financial risk exposures that we have with those two pieces together we're finding that um, companies are now seeing anywhere between a 25 and 30 percent reduction in unnecessary capital which is a really great savings to our company companies today and helps them really improve those decisions and their efficiencies well on the the last pillar to the right the mitigate risk and compliance is where we're really being able to see that we have that analysis of the key performance indicators we're supporting all of our treasury requirements we're having those integrated controls and those processes and um, again, able to save 25 to 30% reduction in risk management we have been seeing across our different customers. Julio, um, how does, do you feel that that actually in your space is helping um, increase our internal controls? Well, Kim, I think, you know, <laughs> it's funny you say that because just because people are working remotely doesn't change anything from a compliance perspective. In fact, I would think that because people are working remotely, it actually increases the risk of uh, fraud. It increases the risk of um, people doing things that they're not supposed to, not following protocols. So having this type of system, it actually improves your controls, improves your segregation of duties. And you know, when we talk about reporting, because you know you have this reporting, head head hedge reporting, derivative reporting. What's important, and you keep saying it all the time, Kim, is transparency, transparency and visibility. Now, transparency and visibility also works in compliance because that's exactly what somebody else is reviewing to make sure that the transactions that the company is doing is, is along in the guidance of whether it be hedging, whether it be derivatives, whether it be payments for debt or what have you and i think especially now kim when you have in your previous slide you talked about counterparty risk we all know in a hedging transaction there's one party on the other, one side and then there's a counterparty on the other side so somebody when you are hedging an instrument somebody is taking the other side of that transaction and companies are disappearing because of this pandemic, companies are filing for bankruptcy. So it's very important to have that transparency and visibility to make sure that, hey, 
the other person on the other side of this instrument actually is going to be there tomorrow. So it's very, very important, Kim. Thank you, Julio. Yeah, maybe Julio, you know, there also there's an opportunity when we talk about real-time views and visibility, it's also all about, you know, line of sight into collections uh, and dispute management. If I can trade off a half a percent, you know, 50 basis points or, or something in order to get a faster payment and more cash, you might want to offer that, but of course you need to have controls over that, right? Absolutely. Exactly, which is kind of interesting because it kind of leads into our, our next slides. And um, one of the things I wanted to say when I'm, when I'm, you know, in treasury space as, you know, us treasury folks remember and, and everybody I'm sure has experienced it that's on the phone that's in the treasury space. And of course, Julio, with you and I, what we both have done our, our last slides, what this is near and dear to our hearts is that it's really important. We're always being, uh, our auditors are always saying to us, do you have the separation of duties? Do you have the proper controls in place? Do you have the proper approvals in place? Which is super important today. You know, within the, the SAP systems, when you have that end-to-end -end process with your arms wrapped around it, you're making sure that payments are not going out the door without having the appropriate instructions pre-approved in those, in those payments. You have someone that actually initiates the transaction. You have somebody that approves the transaction. You have the ability to have someone set it up and actually process the payment out the door by another separate person. So you have arms length at all times that you don't have any money going out the door being not pre-approved. You have all those workflows as flexible as you need pre-built into the system. It's, it's, it's ironclad. You can't get around it. And you can't change the controls in the system. It's once it's set up, it's there. You're not going to get it changed without having a very pers a separate person that has nothing to do with the transactions that has the admin ability to go in and make those changes. And, and Kim, just one up. just one thing, Kim. So remember, what what I like as a former auditor myself is the audit trail. You want to talk about that a little bit? Exactly. Yes, and and so that's the other thing as well. Within those, with all those. Everyone has a particular role that's assigned to them. So when you're making those transactions, you're gonna have those reports that shows, here's what happened to the life of that transaction. You can see who actually has access to create the trade and that, and you can actually demonstrate it right on the fly that the same person that created it can't also approve it and also can't send the money out the door. You can't have, you have to have those separation of duties. You can prove it real time and you can also report on it to see exactly what happened when for your quarterly reporting as an example. Absolutely. And I love that, you know, the tools like business integrity screener or screening that goes on top of it. And that's more of a proactive fraud management tool that monitors and uses things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to watch transactions and search for um, transactions that don't make sense, right? Exactly. Transactions that don't fit. So, you know, exactly. that's a great thing too. Yep. And another thing on our risk mitigation, as we have this slide here, we know we might digress a little bit into security because it's so important. But with the cash management payments and your bank connectivity, you really are creating that global visibility of your cash in real time. And so some of the benefits of that are, you know, you're you're getting that improved controls and compliance with those embedded tools and workflows, which we were just talking about. But it's it's there, it's monitoring, you're able to track those changes. You're centralizing your bank account management. So now instead of having it as um you know configuration that you're waiting to have done you have you can use the bank account and management tool to have all of your banking data which treasury always approves the opening and closing of the bank accounts but you can have the sanctuary cards all that information properly secured and centralized in one place where you can also do your analysis as well as your your bank risk which is important that you usually have to do at least once a year um, to the um, cfo of the company or the chief operating officer you also have ability to review your KPI so you can execute your decisions without having switching those systems. So straight through processing all of your, your treasury and payment activity straight through from the banks, their multi-bank connectivity straight through your banks and back. Great. Okay. So you talked about security and one of my favorite topics is digital trust. You know, mm. we know that we know the foundation. Why why do you, Julio and I always work so well together? Because we know each other and we trust each other. The essence of any relationship, of course, is trust. Um, in this world of the digital world now, it's all about digital trust and ensuring 
that you can trust the other person. You can trust that the company is filing the right information, that it's clear and they comply. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, when you actually, within the um, within this operational digital trust, if you will, you're actually able to put in all the controls within that system around all your treasury processes. You have automated controls in place. You know, you're doing your, you have your threat detection, so it can tell you if something's, if something um, doesn't look right right away. You can actually have full governance around it. You have all your cybersecurity for any payments um, going out the door. It's all automated, real time. So you're having that full enterprise-wide visibility into your cash and risk management processes with your arms wrapped around it to make sure that we don't have any operational um, risks. It's a holistic approach across risk mitigation, if you will. And any compliance breaches your, or for your internal pro, um, policies and your external policies, your auditors, you have the ability to, to fully prove and wrap and secure everything in one spot. With the treasury transaction risk, um, the, the counterparty issue of risk really describes the danger of a loss in the value of a receivable um, due to worsening the credit worthiness of our business partners. And our counterparty risk really arise when either the country or the business partner that we're working with um, becomes insolvent. So our counterparty issue of risk is really gonna be subdivided into, sub subdivided into our credit risk and our settlement risk. So let's talk about this a little bit more is that uh, with our treasury transactional risks, we're looking at the end-to-end -end life cycle management for our debt and investments and risk management transactions. We have all of our hedge accounting and our risk and support for the IFRS, the US GAAP. It's all built in and wrapped around managing our debt investments and treasury risk efficiently. We have full business integrity and management through our governance, which is, you know, you hear you hear the word GRC, it's talking about your governance risk controls. And that's all around our trading platforms, our multi-bank connectivity, um, and as well as any kind of inflows of market rates or interest rates and foreign exchange rates and so forth. Any thoughts, Julio, on that? No, I, you know, when you talk about, like Kim was talking about counterparty solvency, I think you know you just have to remind ourselves that we're in a very challenging time, and that is a real risk factor today, because as you see all around, not just United States but in Europe as well, a lot of companies are taking a lot of proactive measures, and that will cause your counterparty risk to either increase or probably decrease. So it's very important to know on a real-time basis. But I think John, that is the whole premise of why I love SAP's system so much is because it gives you that transparency, it gives you that real-time information to make decisions faster. And especially we see today that that is a very needed criteria today to make decisions faster and more accurate. John? Yeah. And, and I think in today's environment, there's a lot of fear. And a friend of mine used to say fear is, is an acronym for false expectations appearing real. And a lot of that, a lot of that is driven by lack of information. And what I like and what you said is that transparency. And that's an easy way for people who have SAP Treasury, an easy thing to do is get that transparency. Know where your trapped cash is. Know what your counterparty risk is. Know what your risk is in terms of your interest rates. That really helps you manage fear. It helps you manage and get clarity on how you want to move forward. Exactly. And we have that fiduciary responsibility to, to protect the assets for the company. And that's what it's all about. We have, if without that visibility, without those proper controls, we can't do our job. So the great thing is SAP has a lot of analytics to help you do that. Maybe you can yeah, talk for a moment about that. Yeah, yeah, it's what I, what I really like about that is when I go back to, you know, unfortunately a few more years back than I care to remember <laughs> is that, you know, when we had to do all this manually, it was a lot of work and it was really hard to try to wrap around our arms around it and do those proper analytics without having to use pivot tables and Excel and, 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 and now all these analytics are built in. I mean, just looking at the, um, you know, the market, 
risk analytics. You know, being able to use have that use of that individually defined portfolio hierarchies to be able to analyze those risks according to all those underlying factors, those of our exchange rates or interest rates, prices and volatility is critical today if you don't have that visibility. But to have that information pulling in from all those the financial markets, the banks, and and so forth, being able to have that information and analyze it makes it a lot more easy for us to figure out what's actually going on because it gives us that ability to look at that data at any given point in time and you know which not just includes the mark to market valuations but gives us that dynamic evaluations and and the positions and our trends that are going on whereas we were talking before in the credit risk an analytics you've got to know what's going on you know with your counterparties are they starting to fall you know what's are they um you know what's going on with the with the issuer risk as well. We really need to get our arms. What's going on? Are we going to be having issues getting payment? We need to be on top of it. Are you know are they um, going to be having problems with having any kind of our settlements? You know or you know what's going on with the credit worthiness of our our clients? And of course today it's a little bit you know wouldn't be as probably this bad, but at least you have an idea if you're going to be collecting those receivables or not. And you know how much more you really want to extend to those customers. If you don't have an have your arms wrapped around it, you don't want to be giving out more and extending more credit to customers that just don't just can't keep on um, can't comply. They don't have the they don't have the worth credit worthiness to, to continue. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Maybe you can kind of wrap up and talk about the risk mitigation and the benefits. Yeah, so really when, you, when, it all wraps, when it all wraps around it, the benefits that we're looking at all in all is when you're taking our focused um, focused approach at looking at all of our, our cash management, our liquidity forecasting, our payments, our working capital management, and our risk and compliance, and being able to have that visibility, wrap our arms around all that risk mitigation around it, really gives us that added benefits of having, providing our insight into how to, you know, how risk and controls are being optimized to meet our, our objectives. Are they, are they not? If, if you don't have your visibility, you don't have your arms wrapped around it, you're not gonna be able to optimize and meet those objectives to control your risks. You need to be able to continuously monitor those risks. You know, having the ability to look at what are your risk drivers? What are those key indicators? And preserving value for our company by minimizing any kind of unnecessary losses, whether they be cyber or they are, not having the proper separation of duties and payments are going out the door without the proper approvals or, or, or not going where they belong or actually not being able to also collect money as we expected. So we really need to identify and manage those risks so we can ensure that we don't have any kind of unnecessary um, losses to the company. Right. And, and I know that we're working with SAP on all three of these spaces, you and I and, and a few others, um, particularly as we look at providing insight um, we'll be coming out with an offer uh, to the marketplace to give them insight into their bank balances uh, on a real-time basis uh, in, in a very short period of time. So look for that, uh, more information. But really, that's a place that you can say provides more insight. Yep, here's your bank balances, and here's the process by which you can begin to move to that straight-through processing. When we look at scanning the horizon for risks and opportunities, again, that's a combination of you know, what we know today about um, your analyzers and looking at opportunities, looking at what is your counterparty risk and is there an opportunity to renegotiate or on the flip side of that, you know, can I renegotiate with some of my um, customers or take advantage of my accounts payable to pay at a different pace, right? So there's been, you know, that. And again, you know, minimizing losses goes back to, I think, what Julio talked a lot about to me, which is, um, yep. Uh, minimizing acceptable losses by looking at my uh, um, positions in terms of you know finance risk. Also, as we begin to look at our debt structures, um, and we see that you know companies are offering uh, or banks are offering better. Do I want to renegotiate, reissue debt? Do I want to balance, rebalance? Do I want to use debt to buy up equity? Um, there are a lot of different aspects uh, that we can see to that, but also securing our communications through tools like multi-bank connectivity or securing it through the use of GRC so that you can ensure that you have the right segregation of duties. Um, before we wrap up, Julio, any, any thoughts on this? So John, I just wanted to, you know, I like to always, you know, bring theory and reality into reality. So 
if you think about what's going on in the real estate industry today, you have a lot of companies who are landlords and a lot, a lot of people have stopped paying their rent or mortgage or what have you. That's going to have a real impact on your cash, on your investments. Some people have these, what they call mortgage-backed securities, where it's an instrument and it depends upon people paying into this instrument so they get their interest payments. All those things are stopping as, as we know it now, and some of it is backed by the government, some of it is not, but it's a very, very important real uh, consideration here. And if you have this type of system in your company, you will get this value real time, as opposed to waiting till the next month to see, okay, who didn't pay me, who's paying me, my instrument has to be written down, I have to write off my, my interest payments, it's very, very critical now, John. I think now more than ever, we need systems like these. Absolutely. And, you know, as we think of also, you know, we didn't even talk about two critical aspects that will come up later on uh, in future webinars and things we'll do are, you know, supply chain. You know, that supply chain risk is, is huge because if you think of, you know, shipping and what do I have outstanding? I own that inventory or do I own that inventory? And how is that having an effect on my working capital, my shipping? Um, how is that affecting things like revenue recognition and my ability to recognize revenue and, and the impairments that might result from, from that, right? So there are many, many different, we talked and focused on treasury um, because there are some real short-term things you can do around that, but also, you know, finance in general. Yeah, especially with the lag in shipping and the time it takes today, um, you know, that's really going to uh, cause a lot more issues in getting those revenues. Yep. So great webinar, guys. I think we hit on a lot of topics. We talked about the future of Treasury and finance leadership. We know as a fact from different studies, whether it's from uh, ones you might read from Bain Consulting, SAP or anybody, that really the Treasurer and the CFO moving um, the reporting the past to helping drive the future. Moving from a tactical role of recording and reporting to a strategic partner on advising the business on how to survive um, places, you know, incidences like this. Really, they almost become, you know, I'm gonna come up with an interesting phrase, the chief resiliency officer, right? <laughs> they are the people who are out there out, how do I make sure I have enough cash and that I've covered the risk in a way that I can overcome today's challenges? We focused on treasury and risk management solutions, payments and bank communications that automize, automate the utilization of in-house cash, in-house banking, and provide real-time visibility and access to control over cash. We talked about cash and liquidity management. Um, Julio, you know, really honed in. You did a great job on talking about the audit and compliance. Just because we're in a crisis doesn't mean we lose track of that. In fact, in times of crisis, it's even more important for us to strengthen our internal controls, whether it's around SOX or ICFR or hedging or any of that, we have to manage that even more diligently. We want to quickly react to changing business conditions. You know, how quickly did we see the, the collapse in the, in the price of oil? I've never seen anything like that in my life. Um, you know, You've seen oil go from $30, $40, $50 a barrel to they want to pay me dollars a barrel to go take the oil. You know, hopefully un unfill the water in my pool and take some more oil, take some money. Seriously, um, <laughs> you know, it happened in a matter of weeks. How are you reacting and what's your visibility? We want to stream processes, not because we want to get rid of people or because we want to downsize, but because by streamlining the processes, we can focus on what's important. We can focus on optimization, helping improve business processes. We can become more agile by having the visibility and insights we need. And of course, we want to mitigate risk and establish that foundation of digital trust to enable the control over the company's ability to monitor, analyze, and develop strategies. So for me, it's all about, you know, what do I do now? We'll be talking a bit more in future webinars. In fact, we'll be talking about what you can do from active lease management. Um, on Thursday, we have a webinar we'll be talking about more uh, there about mergers and acquisitions. So look for more from us. Um, here is your partner. We'll all get through this crisis together. Uh, thank you 
um, Kim and Julio for a fantastic event. And we look forward to everybody on future webinars and webcasts. Have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you soon.